So uh, what I'd like to talk to you about today, um, I know this sounds like a very formal title, linking chemistry and, and uh, electricity, but I'm going to give you a, a researcher's uh, point of view um, on what can be done in the energy area um, to try to resolve some of the issues that we've, we've heard about today. I think there's been a very good context provided for a lot of the issues that we're facing today. This is a very interdisciplinary area involving many different fields. Uh, but from a, an engineering and scientific point of view, we can look at solutions that help to solve the problems in those other areas. Uh, for example, global stability, uh, water, food, etc. by choosing the right types of solutions um, and working on the right types of solutions, we can facilitate those interdisciplinary solutions. It's very important that a fuel uh, or an energy uh, solution is democratic. Um, that is that it's available to uh, people globally, not that one group of people has it and another group of people doesn't. It's very important that we can make use of abundant uh, resources, uh, ideally, uh, so that there isn't uh, issues around that. And there's many other aspects to coming up with that holistic type of solution. What we do know is that energy will be one of the greatest challenges that we face in the 21st century. Uh, that has to do with sustainability, it has to do with climate change, it has to do with all those uh, other aspects of global stability um, that we read and hear about uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. What we would like to be able to do, uh, as was pointed out earlier, is to increase the implementation of renewable technologies. Uh, renewable technologies have, have many advantages. There are disadvantages. So we heard about some of those disadvantages in terms of firm power, uh, how we may need to look at complementary use. Uh, but one of the things that renewables are able to do is to produ produce a variety of uh, different types of fuels, fuels like methanol and ethanol, hydrogen, for example. So we have renewables which produce electricity. Uh, those can be used, for example, for advanced electrolysis to produce charge carriers like hydrogen or uh, charged ions, for example, which can be used uh, for storage. Uh, biomass and solar uh, renewable energy can be used uh, to provide um, a, a plethora of different types of um, fuels. And uh, these fuels are all cleaner types of fuels in that they have a higher hydrogen to carbon uh, ratio. So they're better than using much larger uh, hydrocarbon-based type uh, chain uh, molecules. What we anticipate if we move more into the renewable um, resource area is that we're going to end up with several different types of fuel economies. Um, these are sustainable, they're renewable. Uh, we'll see that some of these will have more predominance in some regions than other regions. But we're going to see a group of economies around fuels that uh, develop. Um, and these will be matched, again, to regional strengths um, based on the renewables that uh, are available. So I, I promise I won't uh, belabor the presentation with many, <laughs> with, with many equations, uh, but it's important for me to illustrate a couple of points here. And one is, if we take a fuel here, for example, methanol here, um, we can react that electrochemically um, as you can see here, it produces electrons here uh, on one side. And on the other side, we can use air or oxygen to do the corresponding reaction. And we end up with a net overall reaction, as you see down here. This produces energy, and that's the energy that we use to do work, the load energy in our day-to-day -day, uh, needs and requirements for energy. On the other hand, we can run these uh, reactions in reverse uh, if we have a power supply i.e. a renewable energy source, for example, that's providing energy, uh, to drive the reactions in the other, other direction to actually reproduce the fuel. And this is one of the challenges and one of the areas that becomes very interesting. So for example, we could take carbon dioxide here, and if we're providing energy here, we can convert the carbon dioxide back to the original fuel that was used here, and we also produce oxygen, which is a very important um, component as well. The other thing we can do is we can look at using solar energy and link photochemistry uh, with fuels as well. Very similar to the electrochemical case that I just showed you, 
In the case of solar energy here, we get a splitting here between uh, uh, on titania, for example, uh, when solar energy impinges on that. Uh, we get a separation of charge, uh, allows us then to carry out similar reactions to what I just showed you. So these two uh, points, or these two uh, overheads here, illustrate the relationship between electricity and electrochemistry and photochemistry. So I promise that that's the, uh, the end of, uh, of, of the equations. Um, but moving forward, hopefully you'll find this a little more interesting. Um, the challenge, of course, uh, to make this happen at a reasonable or practical rate uh, in the area of, of new catalysts. And uh, this is really dominated by the nano catalyst um, uh, area. Um, when you're working in that dimension, of course, it's a very small dimension. It's 10 to the minus 9 meters. It's, it's extremely small. Um, and what we are looking at is developing new structures um, and, and new types of catalysts that will promote those reactions and make them happen. Those reactions being taking a fuel, reacting it uh, to produce electricity directly, or doing the opposite, taking the byproducts of that, either water or carbon dioxide, and forming the fuel um, by providing uh, some source of energy to it. If we're able to do that, if we're able to convert a fuel into electricity, or we're able to take the byproducts of that fuel and convert it back to the fuel, then what's possible is to have CO2 uh, neutral type cycles. The one that you are all familiar with is, uh, depending on how you do it, you can take biomass and uh, convert that into a fuel, use that fuel, and then uh, it, basically the carbon dioxide is recycled through photosynthesis, so we have a complete cycle. So in the ideal case, that is a CO2 neutral cycle. The CO2 uh, does not have a negative effect. So what is the opportunity? Well, maybe we should be thinking about carbon dioxide differently than uh, we have uh, to this date. Um, we try to sequester carbon dioxide. We try to absorb it, put it back into the earth. But maybe we could look at it as a feedstock uh, to produce uh, fuels that are useful for, for mankind. We could look, for example, at industrial processes where we have very concentrated amounts of carbon dioxide. And or we could look at ambient carbon dioxide uh, that we find in urban centers and other areas and remove that carbon dioxide, but at the same time as removing it, produce useful fuels. So this, for example, could be used as a geoengineering type of approach where we actually <coughs> lower the carbon dioxide content uh, but also make a very useful product uh, out of it. The other area we can look at is green hydrogen production from water, uh, particularly using solar, uh, solar energy. Uh, water is very ubiquitous. And hydrogen fuel, of course, is a very important uh, fuel, that, uh, a clean fuel that can, can be used to generate uh, energy for, for, for general use. Uh, the other opportunity that we have is that we can use different types of reactions, like for example the Sabatier reaction here, where we can react the hydrogen here with carbon dioxide to produce methane, and then we also produce water. In these reactions, the water product that's produced is potable water. It's very clean water. It can be used to drink. Uh, so there's also opportunities for solving some of the issues in terms of clean drinking water at the same time as producing uh, power and removing uh, carbon dioxide. So I think what I, the point I'd like to leave you with here is that there's a tremendous potential with solar energy, for example, um, and with other renewables that produce electricity uh, to produce fuels uh, that are fairly clean, that can be recycled without CO2 impact, um, and that opportunity is, uh, is, is there. Um, it, it needs research, it needs development, but it's a very, very important area. Why is it important? Solar energy is a, is a vast uh, renewable resource that we really haven't tapped into in a large way yet. Um, and for example, uh, in one hour, uh, if we look at the solar irradiation that the Earth gets, that's more than all the energy we use in one year. So it kind of provides the context of it as being a very abundant energy uh, renewable resource. My feeling is that this is a very important future approach uh, to fill in some of the major gaps we have at the moment in our energy approach. 
and um, it's a very it's very challenging. Uh, we have a long way to go still, um, but I think we've as a as a humankind have seen these types of challenges in the past. We were able to put a man on the moon. We certainly can solve uh, this type of problem. I think uh, over the next few decades. Thank you very much. <laughs>